Some NBA players have silky smooth jump shots and others you're left scratching your head wondering how the shots even go in. Today we're going to go over some of the goofiest jump shot techniques in NBA history. Sean Marion had an elite 16 year NBA career. During his time in the league, he played for the Phoenix Suns, Miami Heat, Toronto Raptors, Dallas Mavericks, and Cleveland Cavaliers. Although Marion had one of the ugliest shooting forms that the league has ever seen, he was still a very effective shooter and scorer. Throughout his career, he shot 33.1% from three and 81.0% from the free throw line. Marion shot the ball with two hands and released the ball around his chest. Despite his form being one that would be seemingly very easy to block, Marion would never struggle to get his shot off and kept the same form throughout the entirety of his time in the league. It is truly one of the most unique forms and it will likely never be seen again. Marion would eventually get very sick of hearing about his form and when a fan was heckling him about it, the four-time All-Star would let him have it. Marion was quoted as saying, I was a very consistent jump shooter. So you're going to sit here and tell me you want to talk about my mother effing shot, but you don't want to talk about everything else I do on the effing floor? Get the F out of here. Suck my D. Like seriously, I'm averaging 20 plus points and over 10 rebounds a game in the league that's dominated by bigs. At the time, dominated by power forwards and centers, and I'm getting two blocks and I'm getting two steals per game. And you want to sit here and talk about a mother effing shot? Don't nobody in the league shoot the effing same. While Marion was able to still hit shots, even with a form as goofy as his, the same same cannot be said about the next player on our list. Joakim Noah was never much of an offensive player. He played the role of a traditional big man, and while he didn't have much of a game outside of the paint, he was an elite rim protector and rebounder. During his 13 years in the league, he played for the Chicago Bulls, New York Knicks, Memphis Grizzlies, and Los Angeles Clippers. Although he played for 13 years, Noah never made a single three-point shot. Along with this, despite almost every shot he took being right around the basket, he finished his career with a field goal percentage of only 49.1%. At the free throw line, Noah's goofy shot form was put on full display. During his 13 years in the league, Noah would be a 70% free throw shooter. For how atrocious his form was, this was not a bad shooting percentage by any means. Noah's form was so goofy that even opponents would make fun of him for it during games. In the most notorious instance of this occurring, then Sacramento Kings big man DeMarcus Cousins would be seen imitating Noah's shooting form after the Bulls big man hit a free throw. Noah's form on this shot was so off that Cousins looked absolutely dumbfounded when the free throw would go in. Up next is a player who had such a goofy form that one of the NBA's most well-known announcers would give him a nickname as a result of his jump shot. Dick Barnett was the fifth overall pick of the 1959 NBA draft. During his 14th season career in the league, he would play for the Syracuse Nationals, Los Angeles Lakers, and New York Knicks. Luckily for Barnett, he played in an era before a three-point line because he has one of the goofiest jump shooting forms of all time. Despite the atrocious form of his jump shot, he would have a more tame free throw routine. He finished his career shooting 76.1% from the line. Barnett would shoot left-handed, but the part of his shot that made him have one of the goofiest jump shots of all time was the fact that he would kick his feet out behind him. One of the biggest commentators at the time, Chick Hearn, would also pick up on this fact about Barnett's jump shot form and would give him the nickname of Fallback Baby during his time with the Lakers. Despite his goofy form, Barnett would still put together a very successful career, retiring as a one-time All-Star and a two-time NBA champion. The next player on our list, despite having one of the ugliest shooting forms of all time, would do everything in his power to try to mold his game into one of a stretch five. Marcus Camby was the second overall pick of the legendary 1996 NBA Draft. Camby would be selected in front of players like Kobe Bryant, Ray Allen, and Steve Nash. Although he would fall short of having a career quite at the caliber of those three previously mentioned players from his draft class, Camby would still have a very successful 17-year career in the NBA. During his time in the league, he played for the Toronto Raptors, New York Knicks, Denver Nuggets, Los Angeles Clippers, Portland Trailblazers, and the Houston Rockets. He was a beast on the defensive end, leading the league in blocks in four seasons, making the all-defensive team four times, and winning the Defensive Player of the Year award in the 2006 to 2007 season. But the shooting form was never one of Marcus Camby's strong suits. Despite this, he would try his hardest to develop his game so he could be capable of being a stretch five 
and spaced the floor more. Although Camby would put a lot of effort into having a consistent jump shot, it would never come to fruition, mainly as a result of his form. Camby's shot looked like a slingshot and led to him being an extremely unreliable shooter. He would retire as a 20% shooter from three, hitting 46.6% of his shots from the field and knocking down a stomach churning 67% of his free throws. Camby would be such a poor shooter that he would make history and join Dennis Rodman as the only players in the history of the NBA to ever grab 17 rebounds while shooting one for seven or worse from the field six or more times in their career. Up next is another player with one of the most unorthodox jump shots that the league has ever seen, but there is much more to the story of his shooting form than meets the eye. Michael Kidd Gilchrist was the second overall pick in the 2012 NBA draft to the Charlotte Bobcats. Kidd Gilchrist would end up being a bust, but he would still stick around the league for eight seasons. Coming into the league, he was a tenacious defender with a motor that did not shut off. However, he was never much of a jump shooter. This was something that he even struggled with in college, and things would not improve for him in the NBA. During his time in the league, he would shoot 27.2% from three and 71.5% from the line. The lack of confidence was one of the things holding him back the most as a shooter. In a game against the Milwaukee Bucks, he had to go as far as giving himself a pep talk mid-game just to take a jump shot in the team's opening game of the season. Even in AAU in eighth grade, coaches would notice that he had an ugly jump shot, but he played center and rather than forcing him into a more fundamental form, coaches let it slide as a result of him affecting the game in almost every other way. If his AAU coaches would have taken the time to work on his shooting form, there is a chance that Kid Gilchrist could have been a star in the NBA and could still even be playing to this day. Outside of his shooting, he was a very complete player, but with shooting being such an important factor of a wings game, he was more or less unplayable towards the tail end of his career. The Bobcats general manager at the time spoke about the countless hours that Kid Gilchrist would put in trying to make tweaks to his form. He was quoted as saying, you could see him thinking, pressing, aiming. A reporter who followed the Hornets sat in on a film session and caught Kid Gilchrist watching a film of his shooting form, telling himself, what the F am I doing? That isn't me. I don't shoot like that. I don't know what happened or why it happened. Everything got to my head. I was like, damn, I can't shoot anymore. Bobcat's head coach at the time was asked about Kid Gilchrist and was quoted as saying, a lot of guys only see the good in what do. He is the opposite. Things would eventually get so bad for him that he was pulled from the lineup as a result of him being unwilling to even shoot the ball. He would eventually spend some time with former Cleveland Cavaliers point guard Mark Price in an attempt to find a new form, but it would not do him much good as he could never really get over the mental block of actually letting his shot fly. Despite this being one of the more sad and unfortunate stories from a recent high lottery pick, it does not change the fact of how bad Kid Gilchrist's form was when it was at its worst. At one point, he would have one hand on top of the ball, his feet pointed at the sideline with his right shoulder pointed at the rim. What if I told you the next player's jump shot was compared to a video game glitch. Bill Cartwright was the third overall pick in the 1979 NBA draft. During his 15 years in the league, he made one all-star appearance and retired as a three-time NBA champion. He would spend time playing for the New York Knicks, Chicago Bulls, and Seattle Supersonics. Cartwright had no outside shot, but this was not uncommon from a center that played during his era. He would retire without hitting a single three-point shot, but he was surprisingly efficient from the free throw line considering just how goofy his form was. Cartwright would shoot 77.1% from the line throughout his career. Some have gone on to compare his shooting form to a video game glitch. He would swing the ball from his knees to above his head while seemingly switching shooting hands while in the air. This was an incredibly unorthodox shooting form, but it was oddly effective when it needed to be. Cartwright was an integral part of Michael Jordan's first three-piece with the Chicago Bulls, and without him, there is a chance that they could have ended up dropping one of those final series. Up next is a player that, despite having a goofy jump shot form, would go on to be a marksman in his over a decade-long career in the NBA. Kevin Martin was the 26th overall pick in the 2004 NBA Draft. Despite being a late first-round pick, this was still a very impressive feat for Martin as he spent his collegiate career at Western Carolina University. This is a school that has only produced seven NBA players, and no one who went to that school has made the league since Martin. He spent 12 years in the league playing for the Sacramento Kings, Houston Rockets, Oklahoma City Thunder, Minnesota Timberwolves, and San Antonio Spurs. 
Despite him having a very unorthodox jump shot, Barton would be lights out from three. He would retire as a career 38.4% shooter from three and an extremely efficient 87.0% from the line. Martin's jump shot was very unique as there was almost no wrist movement in his form. He would also not take the ball back to his head or hinge his elbow outside of when he first lifts the ball. The only movement in his wrist comes from when he slightly flicks it to propel the ball to the basket. While this is a goofy form, it worked extremely well for Martin. With there not being much of a windup in his shot, defenders would not have many context clues of when he was going to go up for the shot. Pairing this with how quick his jump shot was, it made it almost impossible to block, and Martin would be able to get extremely good looks at the basket. The next player on our list had a very promising jump shot in college, but after suffering an injury before his first NBA game, he would be stuck with having one of the goofiest looking jump shots in the history of the league. Markel Fultz was an extremely hyped up prospect coming into the 2017 NBA draft. Scouts were comparing him to a prime James Harden after Fultz had an amazing season with the Washington Huskies, but Fultz would suffer an injury to his shoulder that would leave him as an incompetent outside shooter with one of the worst shooting forms in the league. If he would have taken time away from the game and let his injury fully heal, there is a chance that his form would have been back to normal when he recovered. But Fultz would attempt to play through the injury, and it would result in him forming bad habits in his shooting form. In an interview, he was quoted as saying, Actually, my shoulder started hurting before training camp in my rookie year, but I thought it was just from how much work I was putting in, from me shooting so much that my shoulder was just sore, so I tried to work through it. I'm going in the gym, shooting thousands of shots, trying to shoot through it. And the whole time, I just continued to make it worse. But again, the mindset that I had, I'm just trying to grind. I'm trying to continue to work through these issues and not knowing that I'm making it worse. Again, I'm just kind of being young and being selfish. I would call it, in a sense, not understanding my body. And I think a big part of it, and again, once I communicated, I started to get the help that I needed. And I started to work and rehab, and it started to get better. Fultz would not make a single three-pointer in his rookie season, and only has one season where he shot over 30% from three in his six-year career. Fultz's form would have little to no motion in his shoulder, a clear result of a bad habit being formed while shooting through the injury. Even today, Fultz still really struggles as an outside shooter. Despite it being his best season from three in his career, he still shot well below the league average of 31%. The final player on this list had scouts concerned about his shooting form as far back as his time in high school. Bonzo Ball would be the second player off the board in the 2017 NBA draft, selected right after Markel Fultz. Even in high school, many were concerned about Ball's shooting form. After he and his brothers earned national fame with Chino Hills, every aspect of his game was under a microscope. Despite this, Ball would keep the same shooting form through college, and despite it being a goofy form, he managed to get his shots to fall. In college at UCLA, he shot an incredible 41.2% from three, but after joining the NBA with the three-point line backed up from where it is in college, Ball would struggle to adjust. In his rookie year with the Los Angeles Lakers, he would shoot a very rough 30.5% from three. However, to Ball's credit, he has improved his three-point percentage in every season since joining the league. He was forced to miss the entirety of the 2022-23 season due to a knee injury. But in the 2021-22 season, he was one of the best three-point shooters in the entire league, shooting 42.3% from three. Coming into the league, Ball even admitted himself that he had a terrible shot for him, saying, I think the first week, Fred Vince let me shoot my way through the first two days and he was just like yo this is what we're gonna do and then he slowly changed it probably over a week then we just kept grinding and grinding to get where it is now i think after my first two years i wasn't shooting the ball how i knew i could or how i wanted to i figured a lot of it had to do with the technique maybe i was getting bigger stronger and it wasn't coming off the same so i had to adjust i believe whatever you work on you're going to get better at that's just how it works for me just putting the time in, putting the reps in, and having the confidence, that's all you need for it to go in. Before making the much needed changes to his form, Ball would start with the ball at his hip and bring it across his body. This was a very slow shooting form, and as a result of that, defenders would have plenty of time to contest the shot. Hopefully Lonzo will be able to recover from the debilitating knee injury and return as one of the top shooters in the NBA. Let me know down in the comments section below which of these jump shots was your favorite, and also hit that subscribe button and like the video.